Jan Hendrik Weissenbruch. Jan Hendrik Weissenbruch, also known as Hendrik Johannes Weissenbruch, born 19 June 1824, in The Hague, died 24 March 1903 in The Hague, was a Dutch painter of The Hague School. He is noted especially for his watercolors. Biography Hendrik Johannes Weissenbruch, also known as Jan Hendrik, was born in The Hague on 19 June 1824, the second son of Johannes Weissenbruch and Johanna Hendrik Azog. He came from an artistic family. His father, Johannes, a chef and restorator, painted in his free time and collected art on a small scale. Among Johannes' collection were works by Andreas Schelfhout and Bartholomeus van Hove. Johannes' cousin Jan, 1822-80, was a well-known painter of townscapes. Another cousin, Frederick Hendrik, 1828-87, was a lithographer, while his younger brother, Frederick Johann, his uncle Daniel, and his nephew Isaac, 1826-1912, were all engravers. When Jan was 16 years old, he received drawing lessons from Johannes Lowe. In 1843, he took evening classes taught by Bartholomeus van Hove at the Hague Academy of Art. During the day, Weissenbruch worked in Van Host's studio, together with Johannes Bosboom and Salomon Vervier, helping to make pieces of scenery for the Royal Theatre. Weissenbruch's early work showed the strong influence of the Romantic painter Andreas Schelfhout. Schelfhout's influence can be seen in Weissenbruch's early landscapes, painted in precise detail. His magnificent cloudy skies show his admiration for the 17th-century artist Jacob van Ruisdael, whose work he saw at an early age in the Marachuis in The Hague, when he was invited to take lessons from this very celebrated artist. His older friend, Bosboom, advised him not to accept. I can't simply say no thank you to Shelfhout, sputtered Weissenbruch, whereupon Bosboom said you should do that, Weiss. You have to learn to stand on your own and see through your own eyes. In 1847, Weissenbruch first exhibited at the Exhibition of Living Masters, and he became one of the founders of the Pulkry Studio. In 1849, two years after Weissenbruch staged his first exhibition, the Taylor's Museum in Harlem acquired one of his panoramic landscapes. However, that early success did not last very long. In spite of the prestige he had earned among his colleagues, he did not achieve public acknowledgment until the late 1880s. During this intermediate period, Weissenbruch went from being a characteristic painter of Dutch Romanticism to one of the best representatives of the Hague School. His lively dune landscapes led to a series of atmospheric impressions of the Dutch polders, in which the artist paid special attention to his representation of the cloudy skies, with its light and shadows and the dynamics of the permanent winds. The contrast from the sky to the water is very important to him, too. Thus he belonged to the Kortenhof School, one of the followers of the Easterbeek School. These beautiful oil and watercolor landscapes were painted, almost without exception, with free and delicate brushstrokes. The sky above the polders began to play a more important role. His use of color gradually became more restrained and his application of paint increasingly broader and looser. This made his landscapes more atmospheric, the bearers of light and clouds. He stressed the importance of both of these elements when he said, The sky in a painting, that is what is most important, sky and light are the great magicians. The sky determines what the painting is. Painters can never pay too much attention to the sky. We live from light and sunshine and go with our palette through the dry periods. Weissenbruch enjoyed working outdoors in the countryside. He usually found his subjects in the area around The Hague where he lived, rarely going far from home. However, in 1900, at the age of 70, he took a trip to Barbizon, where he painted his famous forest scene. The journey to Barbizon must have been a kind of pilgrimage for him since it was in this area that French painters, in around 1830, had first begun to paint in the open air on a large scale. These painters of Barbizon strove for a natural representation of the landscape, paying particular attention to the mood and the light. Nature for Weissenbruch was also of the utmost importance. Paintings 
museums with Weiss and Brutcher's paintings. 